Okay, DeWalt versus Ryobi on a rotary tool roundup. These are two uh, rotary tools that do about the same thing, okay? Relatively powerful little rotary tools. Normally use the uh, work with spiral saw blades, originally come out with a roto zip. Uh, roto zips are plug in and wall only. As far as I know, there was um, never a common battery cordless model of the roto zip. I believe for a while they made one that used their own proprietary battery. The thing uh, obviously about the DeWalt and Ryobi are the two most common 18 volt tool systems. Therefore, if you're already using 18 volt cordless power tools, uh, chances are that these are a decent little addition to your package. Although, they're relatively specialized tools as they're sold, but I'm going to show you how your options can expand on that greatly. The, uh, the current Ryobi model is the P530. It's got a few little improvements. Over the previous model, which is nearly identical, which was the uh, SS180, nearly identical. They use a lot of the same parts, but when I look around inside, th there are some differences inside of these things. And the um, this one had a bad switch. Something went wrong with this one. So the the warranty station, of course, wouldn't fix it, but they'll sell me a part for five dollars. I'll get around to it one of these days. The um, that uses the, the standard one plus battery system. The DeWalt version, roughly the same size, weight, and uh, power. Actually, I, I, I haven't really noticed a significant power difference between the two. The uh, DeWalt version has a toolless uh, changing system. So it's kind of like a little built-on locking deal, a little wrench type thing that's built onto here. So you don't need a separate wrench to change the uh, change little uh, head things on there. The uh, the Ryobi will come with some added accessories. Usually in a DeWalt version, it's a standalone item, uh, you know, tool only. They don't sell it that I know of in a kit with like, let's say, spare batteries and everything. Uh, they'll use these really standard, um, I think that's an eighth inch shank uh, spiral saw blades. Usually you're going to see two types of blades on these things, and usually they're going to be included with a tool. They, uh, but this is a wear item. Okay, they, they heat up very quickly and wear out. This one, you'll notice that the cutting part of it, it, it's very similar to a drill bit, but it's actually a spiral saw blade. The cutting part of it doesn't extend to the tip. And the reason for that is that with some careful adjustment in the way you, you put it in here, is uh, you can use that for cutting uh, uh, linoleum, uh, edge cutting linoleum. And that's a whole nother subject, but basically you would use a saw like this for edge cutting linoleum where it's it, the, the non-cutting part will trace along, let's say the edge of the part of wood or and usually plywood on something you've put uh, linoleum on while the spiral part just cuts the linoleum. And if you work, it goes up and down a little bit, it's not the end of the world, that trace is on there. On fancier bits, you'll have actually a little ball bearing type of arrangement in there. Then this one will also act as a drill. It'll drill in. Uh, usually a little bit of a spade tip on there. A lot of times you're going to use this on thin wall paneling and drywall. You uh, you punch the blade in. It's spinning at very high speed and then cut sideways. It, it's a lot like how a milling bit works, but it's generally used on obviously lighter weight materials. Some people will use these on aluminum and sheet metal, like in the food cart stuff, but you're going to go through blades like crazy when you do that. The, uh, uh, you'll have little little edge guards here. The Ryobi ones are interchangeable between the new model and the old model. They're not interchangeable to the wall because this thing's a slightly bigger diameter. The, uh, the Ryobi does come with a circle cutting accessory free part of the deal. And... Um, Kind of like the DeWalt, it's usually going to be sold as a, a tool alone. But sometimes if you see the larger tool kits, you will see one included in one of the larger tool kits. But this is a circle cutting attachment. It's a little tricky, but what you'll do is you would remove the, um, the, the little guard thing off of one of these, right? There's a couple of plastic pieces here. And basically, this is a guard that's removed from one of these things. And interestingly enough, that if you do run both tool systems, like I do, it is interchangeable between the DeWalt and a Ryobi. 
The, the difference is these parts are not interchangeable. Okay, the DeWalt one is a, is a larger diameter because the, the circular shank on this thing is a little different. But the hole down the middle is interchangeable. It's the same. And on the Sears Craftsman version and Rotodit zip version, there's other attachments that, that use this same basic system. But the most common and useful one is going to be the circle cutter. So what you would do on this is you, uh, let's say I want to set one of the Ryobi tool heads up with this. So this, this would be the attachment. It's off the defunct model. Um, we're going to insert this piece. Oops. And we're going to notice that there's little notches in there. And they, they'll actually, it'll lock on to the DeWalt one because you get that little open side. So um, it, it'll, it'll actually work either way. But those little notches correspond to the little notches on this. And uh, you can rotate it until they kind of click in, right? See how that works? And then this goes through uh, here like this, right? Relatively generic. You'll see how that's not particularly tight. So you put the lock ring on there and tighten it down. Now it's kind of hard for me to do this holding the camera with one hand, but... We'll, uh, you know, that's that's pretty much how those all go together. It all screws together. It all self-centers. And then what happens is you, you can use these little side screws to attach to the little thread of hole here. And like I said, as long as you still have this piece from your DeWalt, you can also install this circle cutter on a DeWalt. And a lot of those types of accessories are relatively standardized. The other thing you can do with these is they're relatively powerful. And a lot of times you'll get these little spare collets so you can use stuff that's different diameters. So you can put regular um, router bits in these. They're just it, it, These are powerful, but they're not as powerful as a full-powered router. Okay, so we got to use reason in using smaller diameter router bits. But remember, like I explained to you, the ones that have the little ball bearing in them for, for cutting edges... You, you could do that, especially if it's a touch-up situation or a linoleum cutting situation. But if you're using like a full-size, full-power router bit on, on hardwood with this, it's not going to work. Okay, but if you're touching something up, yeah. But the cool thing is, with the, with the little 8th inch bit holders that these come with, is if you get one of these accessory kits for the rotary tools, kind of like the Dremel tool or the Harbor Freight knockoffs or whatever, this is a neat little gift kit. I mean, it had all these things individually packaged. Uh, it helps keep it from becoming a mess. You just got to look out for, you know, this is made to look good under a Christmas tree. So, like on these little cutting discs, it's it's one per notch, right? But you got the little cutting discs holders, sharpeners, rotary stones, uh, polishers, little diamond wheels. All of those things will work in this and it'll work cordless. So if you're working on small machine parts or something off-grid and get one of these kits, this, this does all go together. So it, it's a multi-tool that gets kind of useful. It's also one of the reasons why it doesn't, may not hurt you to have more than one. Because if you're switching these little heads up here, realize it's either a wrench or kind of a little complex issue up here. Holding one of these down, holding one of these down, and, and, and twisting all of that. You may just want to have more than one tool set up with more than one little tool head. Let's say the little polishing brush and a cutting wheel or something like that. Especially if you're doing precision work on something or art. Um, would I recommend these tools? Yeah. Would I recommend one over the other? The DeWalt is slightly better, but it's probably not a more economical deal when you consider that the Ryobi comes with more stuff. And at the end of the game, the question is, what did you spend on batteries? And what batteries do you already own? I would purchase whichever way you go. I would probably purchase whichever tool happens to match whichever battery system you're, you're more accustomed to using. One thing about the Ryobi system, though, is you have the ability to use a relatively small, compact, lightweight lithium-ion battery which with the battery attached means the tool doesn't get very heavy. The DeWalt model, once you've got one of their uh, nickel cadmium batteries, they are, they are fairly heavy, although this model has a short um, battery shoe attachment. 
it will accept their smaller 18 volt uh, lithium ion batteries but not their 20 volt lithium ion batteries and as far as I know in the middle of 2013 right now they do not yet have the 20 volt version of this out yet or perhaps uh, I would expect in a not so distant future for them to come out with a version that works with their newer 12 volt lithium ion batteries so this is the rotary tool roundup DeWalton Ryobi the Ryobi um, P530 and the DeWalt DC 550.